Hey, what's up, guys? I've got quite a new uh, amount of followers here, so I know somebody's going to give me crap about driving. Um, I am watching the road, I promise, and I'm going to be stopping soon, maybe before I end this video. But I want to talk about exercise frequency. Frequency would be, there's, so there's lots of training variables, right? And one of them is frequency. How often do you work out? And I get asked this all the time. And so I thought I would talk about exercise frequency. Um, the first thing I'll say before, you know, to kind of highlight this, there's a couple factors into my own personal training frequency that won't be the same for everyone else. Um, there's a difference between being an influencer and a coach, right? So an influencer is kind of like you do what they're doing, right? They're just telling you what they're doing. Um, and I do share with you guys what I do, but I'm also a freaking coach. And so I'm not going to have every client that comes to me do the same thing that I'm doing, right? Because I'm starting in a different place. But I do want to talk about this aspect, a couple things. One is if you haven't looked into uh, neurotyping from Christian Thibodeau, I have found that to be one of the most interesting things that I have done in my training career is mentor with him, get his certification. And if you want to learn about that, um, you can watch my podcast with him, either on my YouTube channel or on any of the audio platforms. It just search Tara Garrison, Christian Thibodeau. Um, it's, yeah, it's French. So it's T-H-I-B-A-U-D-E-A-U, -E okay? So I'm a 2A. I'm a 2A. So we can handle a lot of training frequency. Um, so I won't go into the detail on that. But I recover very, very well from workouts. I also have a lot of time, a lot of history in training, right? I'm very conditioned. My cardio conditioning is high. My uh, muscular <laughs> conditioning, you could call it, is high. I've been training for a long time consistently. So for me personally, I move every day. Now, I'm not saying I'm going balls to the wall, hitting it hard, just taking myself to destruction every day. But the reason I train every day is, be and this is something I thought I would bring to mind for you guys, because I remember before I could get consistent, you know, you always hear that, it's all about consistency. Well, if I didn't have a set time, if I don't have a set time, like at least a, a flexible schedule, it's like basically like wake up, do my morning routine, go do my workout. So, you know, on the weekends, that might be a different time. I was up very late last night and that was totally worth it. So it was a lot later today than usual, but it was, it's still that flow. And the reason I still choose to move every day is because that makes it, it would be weird for me not to. So I took it really light today. I was up late last night. Um, and so I just did a very light, like walking on the treadmill, very light, just some ladder drills, some light things just to get my blood moving. It's kind of like an active recovery day. And the reason I like to do this is because like when I used to not be fit, <laughs> working out was a stressor. It was this thing that was like a burden that it was like, at some point I need to work out. It was like coming last in my life. It was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do my whole day. And if I can make it work, I will. And guess what happens when you do that? I mean, I'm sure many of you have experienced that. If you don't have any sort of consistency in your training schedule, and it's just this thing that comes last, it's very hard to get results because it will get pushed to the back burner. So I personally really like to have a dedicated time that I'm moving every day. And if I have lower energy that day, I just walk, I just take it easy. Might do some light stuff like I did today, but it's still that dedicated time. And that way, like results start to come on autopilot because it would be like not brushing your teeth in the morning for me to not move in the morning. It's super good for our circadian rhythm. It gets your all of your neurotransmitters up that help you feel good. So even if you're just gonna go for a walk, like I really recommend having a dedicated movement time. I don't have any clients that train seven days a week, right? But they still move. I still want them to go for a walk on their recovery days, get blood flow into those muscles, get everything moving, you know? And so um, it really depends on the person, where you're starting. Um, I do use neurotyping at, when I, when I uh, program for my clients. Because some people, like the type 1s, they have a high nervous system recovery. Um, my 2s, they have high muscular recovery. My 3s don't really have high recovery for either. So <laughs> they definitely need their rest days. And I've gotten amazing results with my clients that way, even though they might only be like lifting two days a week. They might do a HIIT session one day, a yoga, but they're still, they still have walking. They still have something where they're moving every day because I'm all about creating a life flow that keeps you getting the results you want on autopilot. So like, if you want to get meditation in your life, for example, it's the same way. If all day long you're like, yeah, at some point I got to meditate, at some point I got to meditate, it's just, it becomes a stressor. 
But if it's like, no, there's no decision fatigue, I wake up and I meditate and that's just how my life goes and I've built that habit, so much of this is just habit, then now I just get the results from meditation without it being this chronic stressor of this thing that I have to do and I see working out the same way. So all of us are sedentary AF. Did you know that they even consider most professional athletes to be sedentary? When you look at how much of their day they're actually sitting, even though they train hard, we sit a lot. You guys seen the movie Wall-E? I am demonstrating that right now, especially in the States or if you live in the suburbs somewhere where you're not like walking in a city, you're not getting on some sort of public transportation, metro, whatever. You don't even have to, we barely move. We barely move. We, I'm like, our, if you have a garage, you're still in your house when you sit down in a vehicle, sit all the way there, park as close as you can, barely walk it back, go sit. So we're very, very sedentary. So some movement every day, hell yeah, I'm a proponent of that. <laughs> so at least walking, you know? So I say get your life flow in a way that you, that time of day is just dedicated that you've worked your schedule around it. You just know. So when people are like, hey, are you free at seven o'clock in the morning? You're like, no, <laughs> that's my movement time. That's my gym time. And it makes it easy to kind of create boundaries around that. But if you're like, everything else is coming first, and then it's like, well, I can't work out because I told so-and-so I'd go get coffee at seven. It's like, mm. So like, take life by the horns, make that your set time that you move every day. Or like, I know on the weekends, I give myself sleep in a little bit of time. I don't like to get too far off my schedule usually. But I know that like, I'm like, mm, I'm really not committing to anything before like one o'clock on <laughs> weekend days. Cause I want that time for myself. It's, it's my time, it's my time, it's my boundaries. So, um, yeah, make that for yourself, you know, let everybody else like can accommodate what you say, how your life goes, you know? So I've seen that a lot as people are like, Oh, I can't. Cause I, sometimes I have meetings at like eight. I'm like, why do you have meetings at eight? Can you get around that? You know, especially if you're a business owner, if you're a business owner and you make your own schedule and you haven't done this, you got no freaking excuse. <laughs> if you work for somebody else, I get it, man. You got to work around some things, but you can still create that life flow, whether that's after work or that's getting up early and you got to fix your night times because you're watching Netflix till 11 o'clock. That's on you. You know, you can create that change in your life and get these results, this mood, the mood benefits, the health benefits on autopilot by just having a set time of, I just move at that time period. And if I'm tired, I just walk. I guarantee you're going to feel better after that walk, you know? So that's how I like to look at it. Um, as far as training intensity goes, like training intensely, um, I do lift five days a week, all right? And then I usually have at least one hit session. Sometimes I replace my cardio for a hit session. I do generally do some sort of cardio every day. Today was just walking, I was tired, all right? So I just walked for 20 minutes. You know, some, usually it'll be a little more intense than that. And people always ask that, how much cardio do you do? How much lifting? Generally speaking, about five days a week of lifting, and uh, one hit day at least and some sort of cardio based off how my body feels that day. If I feel freaking on fire and I got so much energy, yeah, I'm gonna hit it on my cardio. Let's go, go time. And days to, like today, it's like, no, no, but my body's like, mm -mm, no, <laughs> we're not hitting hard. I just take it easy and just walk, you know? So set that time, have a life flow that gets you the results you want. And uh, yes, I do think all of us need to move every day, seven days a week something, even if it's just going for a walk outside. So that's my thoughts on that. All right. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. Bye.